With me now, I have Paul McCartney. Paul, there's one question I wanted to ask you on this entire tour. Before the word Beatles ever came into your life, and before the group ever got together, what was your personal ambition? What did you want to be? Um, I didn't. Didn't have any ambitions. Uh, th there was nothing I particularly wanted to be, really, because I was at school for a bit, until, until I was 18, and uh, then I just sort of left school, and I still didn't have any ambition or any idea what I was going to be. Uh, we went into the group, uh, you know, I went into the group, and um, we played around for a bit, and only after a bit, uh, I sort of realised that this was the only ambition I'd really ever had, nothing else. Do you want to continue this for the rest of your life, let's say a musical career? I don't know, really. <laughs> um, I just want to be able to do what I want to do. And so, you know, at, at this moment, this is what I want to do. I, I may change later, I may just get fed up and not want to do that, may want to do something else completely. But it um, be nice to be able to do whatever I want to do later on. You know. There's another question I wanted to ask you. Of all the groups now in England and... Uh Ever since, uh, let's say, the advent of the Beatles, since we came to know the Beatles here in, uh, here in the America, of all the groups that have formed thereafter, what would be your favorite group? Uh, group. Uh, group. <laughs> well, I think... I thought uh, you were going to put on a plug for Silver Black there. No, I can't, I can't get one in there. I think um, the Animals' favorite group, really. Only they're quite recent compared to a lot of the groups. I mean, they've been going longer, but they've only come to the forefront recently. Animals, The Searchers, The Rolling Stones, um, a lot, you know. Now, here's another question that a listener wrote in. When you see these uh, fantastic acts of admiration for you, uh, such as, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in Milwaukee, a youngster uh, threw a rope with a hook on it up to a ledge and tried to climb up to your floor. Does this... Uh, I know you enjoy uh, the, your fans' admiration of, of your work, but does this ever bother you that they may be hurt or uh, uh, that they're going a little bit too far, maybe? Well, it bothers if they're going to get hurt, you know, because actually some of them do ridiculous things. You know. There was a fellow, he wa it wasn't so much a fan, he was a, a fellow from Liverpool. This is why whilst we were in Australia, we were in Sydney, and we were on about the uh, 12th floor. And he climbed right up the side of the building from balcony to balcony. Twelve floors. God. You know, I mean, he could have just fallen off any second. It's ridiculous. And, uh, you know, when we got him up, when he got up to the top, we said, you know, uh, I think that's a bit stupid, isn't it? Because uh, something like that is a bit mad because, um, well, you know, he'd get killed or anybody else doing tricks like that would get killed. And that is stupid, really, I think. Um, it, it's very flattering, you know, to think that they're going to do it for us, but at the same time, it's going too far. But um, minor acts, you know, I don't know what you call minor acts, but I, I suppose, um, you know, uh, at, at concerts, going a bit mad and things don't bother us. In fact, they flatter us, you know, and we enjoy that. As long as, as, long as the whole thing doesn't get out of hand and go too far, then, uh, you know, we love it. Well, you're uh, around the United States or in Europe. Um, what do you think of uh, the possibility that more and uh, more adults are liking your music? Uh, do you think is, this is good for you? You see, you see so many, uh, you see so many adults in the crowd. In some of the cities, uh, there were thousands of adults watching, and it wasn't because they were with their children either. Uh, do you, are you, do you welcome uh, this adult? Uh, uh, the adult fans that you have? Yes, of course. You know, we welcome anyone who's paying. <laughs> Even some who aren't. Um, it's nice, you know. Uh, <coughs> we don't think of them as anything sort of special. You know, they're no more special than the kids. In fact, you know, the, the, the kids are uh, every bit as important. And we wouldn't like to have an all old folk audience, but a, a few in an audience is is quite good, you know. You know, I don't go for these gossip uh, column-type questions. That's right, honey! <laughs> but I wanted to ask you one question. Since there are so many girls uh, who do like the Beatles, so many young girls in their formative years, let's say, uh, if you had to pick a wife, let's say, mm -hmm. what, uh, what, what type of things would you look for? 
Uh, <laughs> as John says, two legs, two arms. Um, special kind of things, I don't know. Just, I don't, I, li I like girls to be reasonably sensible. Don't like them to be stupid or dizzy, you know, the dizzy blonde type, I can't stand. Um, I like, like them to be, I don't, I don't know, you know, sort of well-dressed, but it doesn't have to be fantastic or spectacular or very fashionable. Uh, my idea of well-dressed, I don't know, just sort of, it, it doesn't have to be hip even, you know, they can be nice clothes, uh, good clothes, uh, and not be right up to the fashion. And in fact, you know, just sort of well dressed generally is the the only thing as far as clothes are concerned. Uh, sense of humour, like people do, girls. Have <laughs> like <laughs> John laughing away. Uh, like a girl to have a bit of a sense of humour, you know, um, because I, I don't know. Yeah, because why? Because because I like people with a sense of humour. That's why. Um, Long hair, I like. That's just a personal thing. And uh, good looks, of course. But good looks don't matter uh, so much because so many people have got different ideas of good looks. Mine are, are very different from normal good looks. I mean, I wouldn't say Elizabeth Taylor's the kind of looks I like. That's not the kind. Um, mine's a different, you know, impression, a sort of European look. You, you know what I mean? It's I mean, A lot of American girls have got it. You know, but it, it's it's just not a uh, pretty, pretty face. While well, on the subject of girls, I asked John and Ringo this last week. Do you think uh, looking at American girls and Canadian girls and uh, everybody you've seen all around the world, do you think that the younger girls are dressing over their age or trying to look older? What do you think of this pattern? Um, I don't know, really. I, th I think it used to be more obvious in America in the old days, because uh, I always used to think, looking at films, looking at old beat films I used to see, uh, that some of the girls in it used to look about, uh, you know, look about 20, and somebody would say, well, uh, oh yes, I, I know, uh, she's 14 or something, you know. They used to dress ridiculously old, and sort of like very long skirts like their mothers, you know, and ridiculously high heels at something like 13. You know. uh, and, but now I think it's changing, and I think they're dressing more like their own ages. And I think generally the clothes in America are getting much better. You know, they're looking sort of more, I don't know, but better clothed. Just people are, do the girls, you know, young girls especially. I want to congratulate you, by the way, on uh, I think your insistence uh, on seeing the fans in Chicago and uh, seeing the fans off in Toronto today. They came to see you off, and you saw them off, and uh, I thought it was very pleasant after all the experiences we've been through yeah. to see you go over there. Yeah, well, we've had a quite a bit of that. You know, I mean, we talked the other day about uh, police stopping us. Well, they do occasionally, but when they give us a chance, you know, we'll take it, like today. And one other question. You are a beetle. You are one. That's, of, that's right. And you're right, one of the, uh, you're one of the songwriters of the Beatles. And um, here you have all the fame in the world. And probably, uh, I don't think there's a person in the world who doesn't know the word Beatle or Beatles. Does this uh, feeling of uh, success, uh, this feeling of, um, <clears throat> let's say, fame and success, uh, thrill you, or has it become commonplace? Has it become a job? It's nice, you know, it's nice. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, and I don't think it ever gets commonplace because it's always there, sort of thing. Well, I mean, it, it, so far it, it has been, you know. But, um, I mean, in the papers every day when you read it, it reminds you. Because uh, I, I forget, tend to forget, you know, because I just, I don't know, none of us think of ourselves as sort of famous or anything. We just sort of think, well, you know, it's us, the same group who was playing in the cabin, but we're just getting a bit more money now or something, or, or there's more people coming to our concerts, you know. It just sort of feels like that. It just feels as though we're doing well at concerts, you know, for some strange reason. But there's, there's more to it than that. But I, I don't think any of us think of it, really, as... <laughs> it's, I mean, you get reminded. Uh, so, you know, you tend to, I tend to think of it more than I did. By, uh, because be, I've been reminded. But uh, it never fails to thrill you anyway when you do 
uh, when you are reminded about it. And it still knocks us out. Well, um, thank you very much for talking to us. I thank John, and I'm going to thank you for all the uh, past interviews we've had. It's been nice. Say hello to Greg. Greg. Greg? Greg. Hello, Greg. How are you? Good to see you again. Oh, I'm such a liar. He's not even here. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> here I am again, trying to plug a record. This is Paul McCartney. This net record is called I Don't Want to See You Again by Peter and Gordon. It's another very good record. Remember to get your copy tomorrow. Would you also introduce the Silver Black record to me? Ladies and gentlemen, introducing that sensational artist, Miss Silla Black, singing a wonderful number. What a record. It's for you. Thank you, Bob concerned about the rumor that's going around that the Rolling Stones are now more important than the Beatles. Are the Rolling Stones more important than the Beatles? Is it worrying us? Is it worrying us? Is that no? no. It doesn't worry us because you, get these, we rumors every, them. you <laughs> get these rumors every so often, you know. I mean, Dave, Dave Clark. Clark was bigger than us a couple of months ago. But, Brian. you know, Brian. It, it doesn't always have to mean an awful lot. But every two, two months we have them leaking over. Still is. Well, hi, I guess you know who these folks are. Would you like to give me your name, please? Yes, Jean, this is uh, Paul speaking, Paul McCartney. Paul, you're the only unmarried Beatle, or are you the only married Beatle? Oh, come on, tell me. Uh, you got it mixed up, Jean. John's the only married one, and all the rest of us are unmarried and single and free and everything. And you're available? Yes. You can get him on HP. <laughs> Hello. Hi, you're not married. Yeah, okay. No, I'm George. Uh, Do you, uh, did you write Ringo's theme? No. <laughs> did you? Where have you been, oh, Gene? You haven't been oh, reading okay. the little bits of paper, have you, that says who writes Ringo's no, theme? No, it was, it was John and I who wrote Ringo's theme. It's a beautiful piece of paper. Thank you. And you're the married one, right? Yeah, that's me, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> What does your wife think about your traveling away all the time? Well, she don't like it, Jean, much, but she doesn't mind too much because it makes a lot of money for her. <laughs> hey, Jean. Why don't you come to Tampa and see us sometime? Come where? Tampa, Florida. Oh, I thought you said something else. Well, we'd love to. We'd love to do that, Jean. Maybe we will one day. We'll be looking for you. Great, there's Ringo. Hello, Ringo. Where are you from? Most probably at the place we're going to play tonight. Mm. Mm. Whatever it's called. Have a Christie. The Gator Bowl. Gator Bowl. Do you always eat on the run like this? No, we sit down like this. <laughs> I know, but I mean, with all these people, don't you get indigestion? Well, we usually eat in the room, but seeing the hotel didn't have a room for us, we had to eat, you see. That was unfortunate. Though. Unfortunate. <laughs> Do all of the teenagers outside uh, in the mobs that you have uh, always around, do they bother you? No, never. Not yet. They may do when I get old. They're not bothered yet. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Jean. Okay, Jean. It is Jean Metcalf, isn't it? Morris. Oh, Morris. See you, Jean. No, you're not related to Morris. She's not related to Morris.